Hi guys, after the gin and tonic show and some more chatting, I was given a link to another stream, but by Muslim apologists this time. And they were discussing people who don't believe gods and goddesses exist, what they call atheists. I listened for a few minutes and I quickly got bored. So I decided to call it a day and was just about to click on the close button when I heard my name. So I was, it was a guy, a Muslim apologist. I had apparently, you know, cheesed off somehow or upset by using facts, maths and logical thinking. Now he was whining and crying and got so emotional. He was fabricating stuff. Like I never mentioned any professor. He labels finding a common denator normalization. So he really has no clue what he's doing. Let's quickly listen into what he has to say. Thanks, so much. How are you guys both doing? I um, just wanted to make um, it snappy, my friend, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, yeah. I wanted to give you a suggestion actually for a stream that you guys should do, especially with the uh, remember stops JNT. It was one of your streams, I believe, if I recall correctly, and. Uh, He's an, he's an atheist and he, uh, I, don't know, I don't know, I think he's talking about evolution or something. Anyway, anyway, uh, he's, uh, so yeah, he, you know, I was so lucky to have him on my server. And we had like a nearly 10 hour discussion. Uh, uh, you wouldn't expect this. On, on literally inheritance. On, on inheritance. Because we tried to explain it through mathematics, through normalization, etc, etc. But they just... They just are in denial and they're like, yeah, no, that's not how things work. And we try to ask them, okay, well, prove it, prove it. And they're like, yeah, no, mathematics says this. My, pro my professor says that, et cetera, et cetera. And now, it is true. I was on a Discord server, but just for a few minutes, I ran two guys through the problem and they had no response. So after destroying their confident denial, I left. I was not going to wait around and gloat, so I was really surprised when this game came to cry on Hamza's shoulder. I'm not even sure that this was the same server where I let some guys, and this was longer actually, this was like an hour, where I let some guys through a scribal error in the Quran, a very clear mistake, but something these Muslim apologists can't handle nor admit. Come on, these are kids, okay? Kids with some half knowledge who strut and pretend they really know something. Yet when someone comes along and cuts them down to size and knocks the chip off their shoulder, they're reduced to tears and have only one escape route, censorship. No, they're not finding an intellectual answer, but rather deleting the issue and covering it up. Well, until it bursts open like a pimple at some stage. Okay, I want to do two things here, right? Now, number one, I want to comment on the, the, the stream, the, the long stream, claiming to answer questions posed by a theist. And then number two, I want to address the problem this guy was whining about, you know, just to provide a solid base so people can discuss this and having some information and some, some real data on the topic. Now, the stream itself was supposed to be about biological evolution which these guys don't understand, but they love talking about it as though they do. First off, they spend over an hour in their mental masturbation bubble and then graciously give a non-Muslim the chance to what they call defend their position. Now, this is quite ironic since I don't have a position per se, nor do I need to defend anything, nor is there anything to defend. I simply don't accept their propositions and I don't believe what they expect me to believe. And just to mention this here, to provide input on the like the other side of the coin, I made a video called Atheism, What Has It Done For You Today? Showing what being a non-believer has to offer a person. And quite frankly, it's a lot. If honesty, integrity and reality are important for you, that is. Okay. If you want to watch it, go ahead and do so. I strongly um, suggest it. Well, they now waste half an hour arguing over an antiquated term, which is Darwinism. Okay. And then put a message out there that says, come one, come all. Yet I'm excluded. I'm not allowed to join because I am what they, well, Hamza is, has publicly termed a hater and Islamophobe. Just like that. Unqualified, just claimed it, unsubstantiated, 
Well, I'm not allowed on there. But this is how hypocritical these guys are. And they're so afraid. Why, why do they then complain that Islam is dying and nobody takes them seriously when they put on such a piss poor show? Oh, well, what can you do? Anyway, then 148, Yellow Pete comes on and he says that random does not exist. And then they, they talk for a while and then 217, Ben Sena on natural selection, on God, and then and this was quite interesting at 238 alex the physicist comes on and well hamza says not knowing is random well hang on if i let go of a bowling ball i don't know how many pins will fall well, do i is this now random no of course not <laughs> like random is is when when light okay actually this is this is quite difficult because random on our planet, it's like when you have fractals, you, you, you do have, and they come as close as is random as, as possible, um, because you never know what subset is being generated, but they are finite numbers tending, or the, I don't know if you know Lima's calculation, so they tend to, towards um, infinity, of course, never getting there, um, but it is finite. So you can argue that it is not truly random, but whatever. But then truly random is when, when light, for example, knocks out an electron and we can't predetermine which one or the huge area of particle and radioactive decay in all its variants, because that is random. There's no pattern. It's simply unpredictable and beyond our limited perception capabilities. Um, I don't know if this is going to stay like this. I don't know if there ever is going to be a way that we're going to be able to establish a pattern. I, I simply don't know. But at the moment, it is what we call random. We can't. What we can't do is take a particle and predict all its position and speed and direction. And that's what we know for today. And that's known as the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And this is where we are. So I don't know what we're going to do in the future. I don't know if in future this is going to change. But at the moment, this is what we call random. And then 257.15, this Ahmad Salem, this Muslim dragon, the dragon arrives and starts crying and whining about this mean guy, sobs. I must have really put a dent into his ego or something. Now, as we heard, he, he mumbles something and then says he talked for 10 hours about inheritance. Now, fact is, I was there just a few minutes. And I walked a guy through this mathematical error in the Quran where the distribution of inheritance is calculated. And then I had to leave. And then later when I had some free time again, I went back and then somebody asked me and I had to do the same thing again for someone else. And for some reason, the Islam virus really blocks the processing capabilities of these guys. They, they really don't know what is going on. And I'll quickly run through this after this, this stream comment um, just to show where the issue lies. Now, 301, Sam arrives and he is a student um, of evolution and he calls himself a skeptic. But what he delivers is actually just an argument from ignorance and intellectual laziness. He accepts gods, but not evolution, which he calls a way of life. I don't know, these people don't belong at a university. They, they should go to a madrasa. But maybe he only imagines himself in a university as a student and not the night watchman. Who knows? We don't know this. 304, 53, average jock arrives with limited imagination. No, there are hundreds of options, not just God or not God, how this universe, how this planet, how everything could have just arrived. We could be, you know, like an ant farm, a simulation, an experiment, etc 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 there's there's hundreds of options that i can think of in my imagination and yet he talks about what is observable and what is reality and yet he accepts the possible existence of gods neither observable observable and neither real he even says non-living things live within a system yeah right Okay, 310, Malik can't get the microphone to work. 311, spiritual atheist asks what species Adam was, and he just got an answer, Homo sapiens, and there was a, they, they didn't want to go into this. 312, Fawad says thanks, like thinking to be deceived and lied to. 
That's quite amazing. And then a minute later, Mohammed Osama dropped him. He's, now, he says he's a medical student, yet he rejects evolution, if I understood him correctly. He asks how a professor should be handled who ignores creationism. Well, the answer given by Imran is, be a hypocrite. Don't think, reflect or ponder reality. Just accept it. Just go with the flow, get your exams, and then you can do whatever you want. Oh, man. How can you be a doctor and, and not accept the theory of evolution? I don't understand that. Now, 3.15 or 3.16, Malik is back this time with a microphone, which doesn't improve anything. He's a confused individual, unable to formulate a cogent argument. Then 3.18, Eres Mikasa rejoins, asking about genetic differences between chimps and humans. Okay, instead of an honest, I don't know, we get silly information by, by Imran. And this is actually an interesting question, okay? This is, but this, this requires a little bit of knowledge. Now, I had to go and look this up because I'm, I'm not an, an expert. I'm not an evolutionary biologist or a geneticist or something. So comparative genomics is a field of biological research. And the DNA sequence of protein coding sequences is close between humans and chimpanzees where you have something like 35 million single nucleotide differences and about 30 million of insertions and deletions. But the phenotype, in other words, the, the observable characteristics or, or traits of an organism, this differs vastly. Now, the, the point that we need to make here, we need to look at what it is, what is being said here. They're talking about the DNA sequence of protein coding sequences, that this is close, somewhere between two and four or five percent even. But nothing else. It's not that, you know, we're just hiding the rest or something. No, it's very open. No, whatever. Now, they finalize with an announcement that they will continue the evolution ignorance bonanza a few days later. Why? <laughs> but we're not told. And it seems that Hamza wants to become a professional Muslim and stop working altogether. <clears throat> okay, so that was part five of what they call answering atheists, where they don't answer and not atheists like me because I am excluded. I think they're just too afraid of straight questions by someone who knows Islam and the Achilles heel of Islam, the critical weaknesses. But come on, Islam is collapsing without my participation on silly streams like this. Okay, let me quickly run through the inheritance distribution error, okay, the, the, based on the faulty fractions found in the Quran, in the form of commands, mind you. So, you know, just so that we have the same knowledge level of what is happening here. Now, the Quran has three passages regarding the distribution of inheritance, and this is in chapter 4, sentences 11, 12, and 176. Now, even the most superficial skimming over these commands shows a mathematical problem. Now, the thing is, you cannot interpret two-thirds. Uh, this is the beauty of it. It's mathematical. So you can't go and say, well, it's a translation error. You can't say that this is a problem of interpretation and things. This is mathematical. So where you have a command to provide three daughters of a deceased man with two-thirds of the estate, which, I mean, anybody can see, leaves very little for others. As parents are assigned a third we immediately have a problem, as there is nothing left for a wife or any other relatives. But these relatives are assigned shares of the estate in the Quran, and this is obviously not possible. Now, Muslims quickly realize the problem and propose solutions like over a thousand years ago, where one solution or suggestion is to reduce the shares according to the proportions commanded in the Quran, the so-called owl manipulation. And another suggests simply to take the order of relatives by interpreting different sentences scattered all over the book and assign residual portions to the relatives according to the hierarchy level. But uh, so it's not a God assigning the shares, but actually human beings. The problem is that the Quran excludes both these suggestions. Okay, let me quickly show this. Now, in the first case, this is what suggests, this is what Islamic scholars say. 
Now, of course, division by zero is undefined, so this should be a number, probably an eight, but I don't know why. But here's the problem. If I, for example, take the daughters, in this example, they should receive a share of around 14,000, okay? Now, this is the solution by human. In contrast, the Islamic God commands it should be two thirds, i.e. 16,000. So the human says 14,000, God says 16,000. So now what? Do I do what the God commands or do I do what humans suggest? Which is it? Now, Muslims have created entire online calculators and one Muslim has an entire series of videos on this Islamic distribution of inheritance. And in lesson eight, problem of deficiency, practical guide to Islamic laws of inheritance, this is what he finds. Are the total <clears throat> to the sum of whatever are the assigned shares and make this 27. So we will use 27 instead of 24 from now on this way we have increased the number of pieces of the property. So he displays the problem the same way as the online calculators do and applies the OWL solution to rectify the mistake in the Quran when you apply the commands. Now the alternative to the proportional solution is the residual one. Now we've seen the first one, the OWL doesn't work because there's a contradiction between what God says and what the humans come up with. Now, the proportional solution does not work. So you have the residual one where the estate is divided up by this hierarchical, I don't know, structure that, that you devise using different sentences in the Quran. So the daughters start off receiving two thirds and then the remainder is available so that the parents receive one third of what is left over after the daughters have received their share. But Unfortunately, this is prohibited in the Quran, as it clearly says, to the parents, to each of the two, the sixth of what he leaves. So it says of what he, the, the deceased person, what he leaves, not what is left over after the others have received their respective shares. So we find this command of what he leaves, of, of the, the, the entirety of the, of the estate. We find this again and again in these three sentences. So, and this specifies that what this is taken from is what the entire estate is comprised of and not remainders. So both suggestions fail. If you were to go on to Speaker's Corner, this has been discussed ad nauseum by lots of brothers, uh, brother Adnan Rashid, brother Muhammad Hijab, uh, uh, even uh, others as well. Uh, even us. Yeah, yeah, even after we've had these discussions. Yeah, this is quite silly. Now, I've never talked to Hijab, Rashid, or any of the apologists in Speaker's Corner. And when they are confronted with this problem, they all fail, knowing full well this is a mistake and still trying to deceive their sheep, their followers, by pulling, you know, the wool over their eyes. But the sheep still pay the money to do so. Well, I am being threatened and shunned. But hey, I have the facts, they have the fakes. In other words, this whole thing is a big F for fail. That's it from me on the stream, so take it easy and we'll meet in the next video. Bye for now.